Hey guys, how's it going? Just doing a quick video of Little Nightmares 2 TV edition. Um, I thought I'd dig out the original one just to do a side-by-side -side comparison on what originally came out. Because it's been quite a few years now. That one landed on our door 28th of April 2017, I believe. Uh, I think I got the year right. Um, but that has been quite a while. It did have some DLC called The Moor, which was both amazing and terrifying at the same time, seeing a very darker side of Six if you got a chance to play it. Hopefully the second one will get the same treatment with some extra content, but we'll have to wait and see how it goes in the story. Um, so I'll just get the figures out of the box, um, but first off, we'll just show a side-by-side -side comparison of what actually comes in the boxes. Um, so with the original one, you've got a figurine, just like you do with the second one. Um, you also get a soundtrack over an art book. You got a comic book originally. You get both a sticker sheet and you also got a poster in the first one. Um, whereas this one seems to have been a uh, digital content instead. Um, the nice addition with this one is you get a still book, which I adore. Um, so let me just dig the figures out of their boxes and we'll be right back. All right, so here we are. As you can see, the original one just came with a figure of six holding a uh, lighter, um, just to light the way as she moves forward. Um, not really much in the ways of detail and um, literally just the very bleak symbol of Little Nightmares at the bottom. The second one uh, now introduces Mondo, which is a friend of Six's that helps her on a journey. Um, as you can see, you seem to be able to teleport between TV locations to get to new places. Um, I'm sure I'll find out more about that when the game starts. Um, but yeah, from what I've seen of Mondo, he's very loyal, trustworthy and helpful to Six on her journey. Um, as you can see on the bottom this time, it once again just says Little Nightmares 2. Um, so now I've dug out the extra bits. Uh, let me just grab those. So here's the inside contents of number two. Um, this came in the art book, but I'm not sure because none of it's actually written in any English. Maybe someone can make out from one of the many languages it is written in um, what it actually refers to. Um, <laughs> maybe it literally just says the art of Little Nightmares 2, I don't know. So as you can see, I'll do, give a quick flick through the art book, um, but I won't go into too much detail. Um, I do like the little character designs they've got going on there. Um, as you can see, it's quite a lengthy one in comparison to uh, some of the thinner ones that a lot of games come with. Um, but definitely the stuff of nightmares in here. Um, you guys will have to let me know down in the comments uh, what some of your favourite horror games are. Little Nightmares definitely reaches the top of my charts, along with some Resident Evil titles, of course. Um, it just has that fear factor that just stays with you. Um, you're never sure what's around the next corner, what's going to jump at you, and it just gives you a petrifying feeling every single time. So, um, Bioshock used to be a very good game for making me jump. Um, so, it's just great to see more of the genre of horror games coming out, um, because unlike most side-scroller beat-em-ups or RPG titles, there is 101 different references, different games trying the same thing just to try and stand out. Whereas with the horror genre, there is not many games trying. Now, uh, um, on the Xbox One, there was a game called Layers of Fear um, that later got a sequel. I know that was a preview program uh, game when it originally launched. Um, so that had quite a few moments in it which were quite terrifying. But beyond that, like I said, you end up with like friendly little arcadish games like Costume Quest um, to see you through. Um, so with this game, you do get the soundtrack that was found in the still book, but I got it out just so you could see a better look of that. You see, you get the soundtrack, um, you get the game. It also works on the Xbox Series X as well, so it can go forward. You get the Mojong hat. If you remember, it was basically the corkscrew with eyes. And then you also get access to the gnome's attic. Now, if you remember the gnomes from the original game, they were basically little friends that helped Six out if you helped them on their journey. Um, and I believe it's been long enough that if you played the more DLC, you discover that the, uh, well, we're going to call her a witch from the original game, turned kids into gnomes. So if you got found by her, she turned you into one of these kind of faceless 
creepy little characters that went round and all they wanted to do is kind of find their way home again. Um, so it was kind of petrifying. Um, and it definitely something that will probably stay with me thinking about it with the end of the DLC. If you haven't seen it, I won't spoil it, but it, it isn't pretty. Um, so all in all, that is the collector's edition of number two. I'm looking forward to getting it installed, getting it played. And I'll let you guys know um, in future videos what I thought of it. And maybe I'll just do a review of what uh, how the game went and how Petrine it was. Um, but yeah. Thank you for checking out the video. Uh, if you liked what you saw here, by all means, like, comment, subscribe. Um, follow me for future videos of different games that I've got as unboxings. And I've got quite a few more to add to the channel. Obviously, quite new to this. So I will be doing maybe some of the older collector's editions I have in my possession. Um, and see how that gets on. Um, but yeah, if there's any that you'd like to see, uh, by all means, give a shout. Because obviously, I've got quite a few in the collection. <laughs>